Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the best SPFs of 2022 so far. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and turn the notification bell. It is now June. Can you believe it? It is halfway through the year already, but I thought it was a perfect time to talk about the sunscreens that I have been enjoying the most so far this year. So they're not necessarily new launches, but products that are new to me this year. I know this list is going to forever grow because I'm going to be trying out a ton of new SPFs in the following months, but summer has kicked in full force for most people around the world. Unfortunately, not me. And I know most of you will be looking for that perfect sunscreen to wear every day. Before I get into the products, please keep in mind that my skin type is dry and dehydrated. The first one I have is the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice Plus Probiotics. This one is SPF 50 plus with PA plus 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 and it is a chemical sunscreen. This one has definitely been turning heads this year and I have seen it absolutely everywhere. And I can testify that from the first time I used this sunscreen, I used it every single day for the following week. Trust me when I say I have a lot of of sunscreens to choose from to use on the daily but this is one that was just so easy to reach for it has a absolute melt on whoops <laughs> It has a melt on your skin light cream texture that blends out effortlessly. Initially, I did think there was absolutely no white cast, although talking about it a few times and getting others' opinion on social media, I do feel like that it can have a very slight, subtle white cast. On my skin tone, it honestly looks like just a very subtle tone up effect, but if you do have medium to darker skin tones, it may be slightly more noticeable. It does dry down to a hydrated but natural finish. It is not completely matte, but not overly dewy or glowy either. And I do absolutely love the skin benefiting ingredients that this one includes. Rice, which is one of my favorite ingredients to help with um, evening out skin tone and texture. And then it does also have probiotics, which helps with like overall skin health, as well as niacinamide that helps pretty much everything else. It is alcohol, fragrance and essential oil free, and it is also vegan and cruelty free too. In my opinion, it is a sunscreen that I feel like could work for all skin types and it is also pretty affordable too, um, being $18 at full price, but you can often find it on sale. This next portion of the video is sponsored by one of my favorites, Dalba. The Dalba UV Essence Waterfall Sun Cream. This one is a SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 chemical sunscreen. You guys know I love the Dalba Mist. I mean, I think I, yeah, I literally have like four on my shelf right now. But have you tried their sunscreen? This one is a bit of a rediscovery. I have used it in the past, but it was probably like a year ago, possibly. So I kind of forgot about it. As soon as I applied it this time, it was like seeing an old friend, you know, it was just... It was just so comforting. It has such a light essence type of texture that is instantly hydrating and makes your skin feel and look really fresh. To be honest, I don't know why more people aren't talking about it because it is so texturally elegant. I don't even know if that's a word. And he has won so many awards in Korea and has actually sold like, I think more than 2 million units globally. It also works really well underneath makeup because it is hydrating and gives that subtle glow, although it isn't sticky feeling on the skin. A lot of the time when sunscreens have a glowy finish, they tend to feel heavy or even can be tacky, but this one just just isn't. It is ethanol and fragrance free and also um, vegan and cruelty free. It does also contain truffle extract which is Dalba's signature ingredient that they include in I believe every single one of their products. It is known to be a great antioxidant and also can help with um, signs of aging like elasticity and fine lines. And along with the waterfall essence I actually have been trying Dalba's other sunscreens which I hadn't tried at all in the past and 
I am legitimately so impressed. The Dalbar UV Essence Waterfall Mild Sun Cream. This one is SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 and a 100% mineral sunscreen. I do not usually go for mineral or also known as physical sunscreens because I do not generally need the benefits of them. If you are unfamiliar with the differences, here is a quick lowdown. Physical or mineral filters create a barrier on top of your skin and reflect UV rays. Whereas chemical filters are absorbed into the skin and absorb UV rays. Those with sensitive skin can prefer the physical filters since it does just sit on top of the skin and doesn't get absorbed, which is what can cause that sensitivity. As well as physical filters being less pro to eye stinging, which a lot of people can experience from sunscreens. Personally, I do not suffer from either sensitive skin or eyes, hence why I tend to go for chemical sunscreens because generally speaking, they are more cosmetic elegant and are more white cast free. This one is one of the few physical sunscreens that I actually enjoy. The texture is a little more creamier and a little bit more moisturizing compared to the Essence version, although it still blends beautifully. Personally, I do not feel like there is much of a white cast, but it is very nourishing, which works so well for my skin. I wore it all day under a mask for like nine plus hours at work, and it still had my skin well moisturized at the end of the day, and there was absolutely no peeling, which I feel like is a characteristic that some physical sunscreens can have. Since it is quite nourishing though, I don't know if you oily skinned beauties out there would love it quite as much as myself, but hear me out on this hack. If there is a sunscreen that you absolutely love the texture, you love the formula, but you think it's a little bit rich for you, skip your moisturizer. Especially if it is packed with skin benefiting ingredients like this one, you don't need your moisturizer. Just skip straight to this. Heck, honestly, just wash your face and then apply sunscreen. That is still enough. That is still fine. Again, this one is ethanol and fragrance free, is vegan and cruelty free too. And the last one from Dalba is the UV Essence Waterfall Tone Up Sun Cream. This one is SPF 50 plus with PA plus 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 and is a hybrid sunscreen, meaning that it has both chemical and physical filters. You guys know that I have been in to tone up sunscreens lately because they are such an easy way to achieve that healthy but flawless look with out makeup. I will say this one is definitely not a makeup type of tone up cream, but it is definitely more a SPF that has those subtle tone up qualities. And the finish, oh my god, you guys, it looks so good. Um, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the actual look of the product first. So it does have a pinkish tint to it. It is subtle, but it definitely has that pink tone. You can probably see it more on the tube here. And this is actually really common in Asian cosmetics, especially Japan. Japan is all about that pink base because it is supposed to give that subtle tone up effect but also give your skin that kind of naturally translucent look, which Japan is just obsessed with. So when I first applied it, I actually filmed the first impressions application. So I'll insert it here. Um, but I thought I had applied too much doing the two finger rule. So I felt like, oh, maybe I can't use this as a sunscreen if I apply too much. But once it had settled into my skin, oh, my skin just looked so damn good. It was dewy. It was glowy. I even got multiple comments that day saying my makeup looked really good, but it was in reality this um, Tone Up Sun Cream. It doesn't give you coverage. I'm not going to lie. It doesn't give you coverage, but it does give that veil on top of your skin. So I put this on and then kind of just applied concealer in the areas that I felt like I needed coverage and my skin was just like it was just like glowing from the inside and I was sold. It is definitely one of the more subtle and natural looking tone up items I have tried, but I am totes in love. And same with their other SPFs, it is ethanol and fragrance free and is also vegan and cruelty free. Even look at my hand. You can see that dewy glowiness and that tone up look. It just, oh. It just looks so good, man. Next, I have the Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Mill. This one is SPF 50 with PA++++ and is also a hybrid sunscreen. Let's throw a Japanese sunscreen in the mix, shall we? Wait. Oh, this is actually the only Japanese sunscreen. I guess I haven't tried that many Japanese sunscreens that are new to me this year, but... 
don't worry, I definitely will be. In all honesty, I'm just impressed with this one because there are not that many milk type sunscreens that I like and this one just hits the spot. It is such a lightweight fluid formula that glides on the skin and it can be layered many times without it feeling heavy or powdery on the skin. Initially, it does have a bit of slip. As you can see, it is still quite dewy on the skin, but once it dries down, it is a beautiful semi-matte finish, so work for even oily and combo skin types. But it doesn't dry like completely matte or powdery, which I feel like some milk sunscreens can do, and hence why it works even for my drier skin. It is also waterproof and sweatproof, so perfect for summer and humid weather, and it is also fragrance and essential oil free. Next, I have the Round Lab Birch Juice Moisturizing Sunscreen. This one is SPF 50 plus with PA plus 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 and is a chemical sunscreen. So someone did ask how this one compared to the beauty of Joseon Relief Sun, and at that point, I had not tried this one yet, but I felt like it would be a good comparison so I opened it up tried it out and yep they are really really similar so in a sense I feel like Round Lab did it first because this one has been around for a couple of years and they actually won number one in the sunscreen category on Hua in 2020 two years ago Everything about them is similar. The packaging, like the same tube packaging, same lid and everything, the texture, how they both blend out seamlessly, like they are incredibly similar. Let's do a quick side by side so you guys can see. So this is around lab. This is Beauty of Joseon. Like the textures are so similar. <laughs> they both truly don't feel like a sunscreen. They feel more like just a light moisturizing lotion. Although the difference is that I found the Round Lab one to be a bit more moisturizing. So if you do have drier skin, you might actually prefer the Round Lab better. Initially, this one is a bit more dewy on the skin as well. It has that glowy finish, but surprisingly, it does dry down to quite a natural finish, really similar to the Beauty of Joseon. Its key ingredient is birch tree extract, which is to help with moisture loss and it definitely seems to be the main selling point of this one. I can definitely say that my skin does feel plump and moisturized all throughout the day. It also includes ingredients like hyaluronic acid for hydrating, ascorbic acid which helps to brighten skin tone and niacinamide that helps overall skin health as well as some soothing ingredients like mugwort extract, licorice root extract and purslane extract. It is also free from any drying types of alcohol, fragrance and essential oils and of course is vegan and cruelty free. I feel like these two are pretty interchangeable. I have seen some people say that they have reacted to the beauty of Joseon. Maybe it's the fermented ingredients. I don't know. Everyone's skin is so different. But maybe if this one wasn't the perfect fit for you, you can try the Round Lab. Now we are going to be finishing off with two sun sticks. I do not use them as my primary application for the day, but they are definitely handy when it comes to reapplying throughout the day. The first one is the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Airy Sun Stick. This one is SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 and is a chemical sunscreen. This is the sun stick that I've had in my work bag for actually from the start of the year. I would get out of work and then while I waited for my bus to go home, I would reapply with this sun stick. To be honest, I have not used it in a while because it is officially winter in Australia and by the time I get out it is usually dark or almost sunset so I really don't have to reapply my sunscreen because the sun is gone. But it is very compact therefore easy to travel with and very easy to apply as well. It does not have a white cast and glides on it very easily and compared to some other sun sticks I've used I feel like it is less dewy and has more of a natural finish. Yes it can feel a little bit tacky when first applied but even without blending it with my fingers I feel like it does dry down pretty Pretty well after about 10 minutes or so. If you do not like that tacky feeling, I do recommend just using like a cushion puff or a beauty blender to lightly pat it down. Although a big pro of this one is that I actually feel like it has a skin blurring effect. So once you apply it, it makes your skin look like it is blurred out and your pores less noticeable. In regards to application over makeup, it's fine. In all honesty, there is no sun stick out there that 100% won't affect your makeup. It's just impossible. As soon as there is contact of anything to your makeup, it is going to move it. Like if you drag your finger on your skin, 
it is going to move your makeup. But as long as it is white cast free, I feel like it will affect your makeup less. How I recommend to reapply over makeup is to first blot your skin with some blotting paper to get rid of that excess oil, reapply your sun stick, and then tap lightly with your fingers or preferably a puff to kind of blend it in. And if you are really worried about how your makeup looks, reapply your makeup on top. Like, it's that simple. Just carry your makeup around with you and reapply. Personally, I would much rather my skin be well protected than worrying about my makeup looking perfect because in the end, if you do protect your skin and take care of it, then you wouldn't even have to wear that much makeup. Do you get what I mean? Do you get the cycle? Like, do you see? One precaution is to make sure you wind it down well because I did experience if I had it a little too high. The cap is actually pretty low so it kind of crushes against the top and makes it kind of crumble and it is a bit of a mess so just make sure you do wind down this one properly. And the last product we have is the Abib Quick Sun Stick Protection Bar. This one is also SPF 50 plus with PA++++ and is a chemical sunscreen. I mean looking at the stick and it being pretty much transparent I think you know that this one does not give white cast. Another easy to use sunstick that does glide on effortlessly. I also love the contoured shape that it has since it does fit your face better and you can get more coverage with one swipe. Really easy to apply on the body too so on your arms even your neck and the decollete is really easy to apply with the wide contoured shape. This one is a little bit more dewy and tacky feeling compared to the isn't tree so if you do have oily combo skin you might prefer the isn't tree one better. Oh, and I also um, know that some people are wary of the unhygienic nature of sun sticks and I have been asked a few times on how to clean them. To be honest, there are a lot more disgusting things out there than the sun stick that you use to apply on your own self. But <laughs> how I clean it is to wipe the majority of the gunk off on a clean tissue, especially if you might have a little bit of makeup on it, if you applied over makeup, wipe the majority of that off. And then I get some rubbing alcohol um personally i just keep some in a spray bottle because i use it to do like quick cleaning of makeup brushes and stuff and i just do a quick spray onto a tissue and just wipe it down so that is sanitizing the surface of the sun stick leave it to dry for usually like 10 seconds and the alcohol will evaporate and it is literally as good as new how nice and smooth and clean is that also alcohol fragrance and essential oil free i think i kind of forgot to mention that with this entry but both of these are alcohol fragrance and essential oil free too. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. You guys have no idea how many new sunscreens I've still um, got to try. I am seriously worried about how long this list is going to be by the end of the year. Remember to wear sunscreen every day and if you do want to watch some more sunscreen content to buy yours truly, I have selected a couple here for you to check out. Go ahead and click one of those, let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Mwah.